100%. Well, let's find out. There's somebody who yes. probably is in Nebraska right now. He's big and studly. The last time I saw him, he probably weighed 100 pounds more than he does now. Now he's a GQ model. Ladies and gentlemen, our friend Jeremiah Searles. Hi, buddy. How are you? Hi, friends. I miss you all dearly. I'm doing well here in Nebraska. The weather's finally changing, so it's not hot anymore, and uh, I'm getting excited for the fall. Well, listen, Fargo Flash, Tommy Olson, and Ben Lieber all in the studio. Of course, Ben, uh, the only uh, um, a realistic Gopher fan. These two guys <laughs> are uh, honestly just uh, over their mind. But i got to say, Fargo's got me down a little bit. He's trying to tell me your Cornhuskers are a pretty good team despite their rec- record. Yeah, you know, they're, they're better than I think that people give them credit for. The Illinois loss is inexcusable. You can't, you can't excuse that one. I mean, that's a bad football team. But our other three losses, all 10, I mean, top 10 teams, all still undefeated and all by one possession. We're starting to figure something out here in Lincoln. What's gotten better? Is it the quarterback play? Is it the, is it now it's the, it's the triple option effect with all the other gadgety things that you can do mm-hmm. with the quarterback? What, what has gotten better in these eight games? You know, I think the biggest thing is Adrian Martinez has had more weapons around him than he ever has before. I mean, we pick up big Samari Ture from Montana, who is an FCS All-American. Omar Manning's another guy that's trying to break out. Our two tight ends are arguably both six, one six nine, one six six, and you can just kind of throw it up to him. Mm-hmm. And then we've had the kind of the emergence of a, a running back. And so Adrian doesn't have to put on the Superman cape. Um, and do it all for him. But honestly, the thing that's made the huge difference is our defense is playing really good team defense. I um, mean, they hold Kenneth Walker, the Heisman favorite, to 47 yards in the in, in rushing in the game. We hold Michigan to make them have to throw the ball because we made them one-dimensional. And Shenander, Coach Shenander, our defensive coordinator, has done a really nice job getting them together. And then since Michigan State, we haven't had any seven-yard punts or we haven't punted in the wrong direction. So that's always helpful, too. Oh, goodness. How much pressure on Scott Frost in year four? You know, I think I think his approval rating right now is higher than it's been in the mm-hmm. last four years. And I know we're three and four or whatever we are, but I think people are starting to finally see all that stuff. He's been saying we're close, we're close, we're close. I think we're finally starting to see that as a fan base to, hey, I think we actually are close. It's not just lip service anymore. Like, I think we're actually about to turn the corner. You're seeing the guys play harder. And physically, we stand toe-to-toe. So I don't think Scott's in the hot seat at all. Trev Alberts, our new AD, played here at Nebraska, played in the NFL. He's a football guy. And I think those two have a really good relationship and want to see this thing keep growing because the last thing you want to do after four years is do what everyone in college football does is tear it down and start over. Hey, Jeremiah, Tommy O here. Um, had a question. You played up front. You were offensive lineman. I saw a stat that, Nebraska's given up the one of the most like 128th in sacks get allowed. Is that because he's mm-hmm. a, is that because he's a scrambler? Or are you guys kind of struggling up front? So our two tackle spots have really been struggling. So we started the year with uh, Turner Corcoran at left tackle, Bryce Benhart, big Minnesota guy mm-hmm. at right tackle, and we had to make a change after the Michigan State game because we gave up seven sacks against Michigan State. And if Adrian Martinez isn't the magician Houdini that he is, that's like a 15 sack game because he mm-hmm. is a scrambler. And so we made some changes. We started a true freshman at left tackle against Northwestern Michigan. He is out for the year, which mm-hmm. is upsetting for a knee injury. So we kind of reshuffled that back to the original offensive line. But a lot of it is um, protection issues. I mean, there's no really way. It's not because he's all over the place. He just hasn't really had the time. So Scott has challenged those guys. Uh, coach Austin, our line coach, has challenged those guys. But a lot of it's just because it's been one guy. You know how it is, Tommy. One guy here or there lets up a leak in the dam, and it's a pressure. It's a sack. It's He's moving off spot, so then someone else is giving up a pressure sack. So that that group's got to play a lot better, especially for us to win, because you guys got a talented front up there as well. Well, that's what I was going to ask is, from your point of view, I know that we will, you know, Justin and Tommy will sort of break down the Gophers' probability, but from the Gophers' eyes. Now, from the opponents' eyes, as you're looking at it, with the fact that they're on their third running back, and the quarterback has not lived up to his expectations, although there's a big offensive line. The defense Mm -hmm. is decent against the run. From your scouting report on the the opponent side, how do you see this Gophers team? Yeah, so, I mean, if I'm scouting the Gophers, which I have been all week, I look at them and go, okay, they want to pound the rock with seven offensive linemen, which I love personally, but they just haven't really been able to get it going. I mean, even with seven offensive linemen in there, it's two yards, three yards. Like, you're not seeing the break-off runs, and that's because people aren't afraid of Tanner Morgan throwing the football. Mm. 
Um, when he does throw the football, they max protect, and it's three-man routes. And so you got seven guys up there blocking, and I don't know if Ottman Bell's playing or not. I mean, but if he is, that's a big weapon for you guys. If he's not, that's a big-time problem for you guys. I don't really know. He is. That's good. So he can go up and get the football. Um, I mean, he's the one guy on your team. And so that's kind of the issue is the last few years you've had Bateman, Johnson, some other guys, two guys, right? You really have one guy, in my opinion, that's truly going to go up and get that football. And so offensively, you know, you're going to max protect. You're going to lull him to sleep, run and run and run and then throw one deep. And that's kind of been the game plan. And if it's not working, then they really struggle. Defensively, you, you haven't been pressuring as much lately from what I've been seeing. And it's really just want to rush four and play sound defense in the back end. And with Nebraska, that's hard because with our option game, if you don't put some more guys up in the box, it can be really big games because the guy you're optioning off of, he might be the last man in defense for another 15, 20 yards, especially with the way we're, we motion wide receivers and we bring tight ends. And our, our window dressing on offense is kind of all over the place, and that can really cause some problems for the defense. But, I mean, uh, Mafe is a great pass rusher. Uh, he can really get after the quarterback. And you can tell he's him and Rush, I believe number eight, right? Rush, yep, I believe yep, his yep. last name. Those two guys can cause some problems. If I'm an offensive lineman, I put stars around those two guys on your defense and say, hey, we got to make sure we take care of these two guys or else they can what I would call game wreck um, on defense. Jeremiah, sir, uh, two things real quick. Uh, um, number one, so are, are you predicting a big game for your team and are you looking past us already? No, absolutely not. I mean, there, this, there's never been a close game under the Scott Frost, P.J. Fleck era. Hmm. Well, I mean, the first game, Nebraska blew them out. The last two years, you guys have absolutely dragged us up and down the field. I mean, there's no question about it. You guys did it with like eight guys last year because you guys all had COVID. So I think Nebraska remembers that. But I also hmm. think Minnesota remembers dragging them. And so I think these are two confident football teams. You guys coming off a bye, getting a little bit of juice, getting a little bit of reinvigoration in you. I expect a good football game. I expect a good Big Ten football game because the Big Ten all around is a good conference this year. You guys are a little bit on the down. I think this is a game Nebraska needs to win if we want to go to a bowl game. And us going into the bye next week, I do feel confident in our team, but then by no means do I think this is going to be Nebraska walks in there and just clobbers the Gophers. I think it's going to be a really good football game. It's going to come down to who turns the ball over and who doesn't. Okay, that's number one, uh, and great to hear your voice. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate you doing great as always. I love you guys. I, I love, love you guys too. so I much. Miss I, miss you, by the way. I miss you. I too. miss you a lot. <laughs> let, let me ask you one more question. On October third of twenty twenty one, less than two weeks ago, somebody stole your truck. What? What? Mm. Uh, did they? They found it not long after that, I believe. Did they do any damage? Did they take a number two on the seat? Is everything okay? <laughs> what happened to your truck? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I got home from the Michigan, the Northwestern game at like twelve thirty. And I was leaving for New York at 5 a.m. the next morning for a wedding. And so I pulled into my on the street of my house. And I was like, oh, I'll be in here in five. And so I left my key in my wallet like an idiot. Oh, mm. Like an idiot in my truck and came out the next morning. And it was gone. Um, we did find it. They ended up just taking it for a joyride and parking it somewhere downtown. Um, and they cut the GPS out of it and cut some wires in it. And that was it. They didn't steal it. They left my Bose headphones. They left my Oakley's. They left everything. Oh. They leave your wallet they in left there? They your wallet, yeah. too? No, no. Took okay. the wallet. Oh, wallet. Man, <laughs> that had to be loaded <laughs> but, with cash. <laughs> yeah. But insult to injury, I'm in Kansas City yesterday for uh, a line of duty benefit from the NFL getting looked at. And I'm sitting at a stoplight in some big delivery van, forgot to put his car in drive and put it in reverse and just smashed into the front of my truck. Wow. So I gotta, my, my poor my poor truck's had a, a rough go of it the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, boy. put it in the garage yeah. for a few yeah, weeks and let it rest. Yeah. My gosh, man. Dude, just stay home. Yeah, yeah why would you go <laughs> anywhere? I know, I know. But I will be in Minneapolis this weekend on the sideline. If any of you guys are at the game, I expect you to come say hello. Oh, or if you're I'll in the booth. Ya. If you're in the booth, I will come say hello because I'll be up in the booth immediately after the game. That's yeah. the best, man. Great to hear from you, dude. So yeah, glad love you're you. doing you're well. the best. Great to hear from you. Happy Absolutely, hunting. guys. Appreciate you guys. See hey, yeah, go Vikes, too. Skull yeah. Vikes. Skull Vikes. See you, man. See you, buddy. Jeremiah Searles, former uh, Vikings ever, offensive man. line. He's the best. Man, he's good at that, too. I don't know if you guys follow him or he not. Is, but he is, oh, uh, yeah. He's ensconced in uh He's Husker so football. good, yeah. He's really good.